my name is Laura and we're going to be meeting with another amazing ambassador animal today to have a really fun lesson while you're at home. But before we get started, we wanted to actually give a little shout out to some fans. So we received an amazing letter addressed to Do the Box Turtle from Graham and Media. And I just wanted to show you guys what he sent us. It's a really awesome little piece of art so it looks like he drew dude the box turtle eating a strawberry so thank you so much Graham this kind of stuff makes our day we really really encourage anyone who might have some cool art or projects they're working on based on our zoo school lives to submit those to us you can send them to us via snail mail if you want or you can email them to us or even post them in the comments um, we'd love to, to hear that you guys are, are learning and, and enjoying the experience so can definitely keep that stuff coming um, you may also check out our website, elmaparkzoo.org. We have all the lessons posted on there, and along with each one, we have little questionnaires and activities. We're going to have more activities coming, so make sure you check out Bubby's Club um, for the at-home activity section and the Zoo School Live stuff. So, all right, without further ado, we are going to get started meeting with our live animal today. Now, he is a little bit different than... Um, some of the other animals we've met before because he's going to be doing some active training during the session today. So most of our animals, we've kind of just let them run around and explore a little bit. Um, today, we're actually going to have this animal demonstrate his movement um, and do some training for you. But we're going to focus mostly on his senses. So yesterday, we learned about Bree the skunk and about her excellent sense of smell. Today, the animal we're going to meet has an amazing sense of eyesight. In fact, um, most of you may be familiar with the phrase, I'm going to watch you like a hawk. That phrase comes from our animal friend we're gonna meet today. Um, we're gonna meet a red-tailed hawk named Killian, and he's gonna come out in just a second to say hi. Um, in order for me to share Killian with you guys, I do have to have some extra special equipment today, so I have a really fancy and fashionable glove. Um, this is made of very thick leather to protect my arm and my hand because I'm kind of gonna be Killian's um, unofficial bodyguard, his little chauffeur today. While he's demonstrating his awesome adaptations, he's gonna be hanging out on my glove. So. Um, I'm going to get him set up and bring him out while you guys take a look at some really cool artifacts and biofacts we have on the table here. All right, guys. So some of the artifacts that we have on the table, these are two replicas that we have. We have an eagle talon replica. So this is not a real eagle foot, um, but it's made out of a plastic material. But you can see those talons on his feet that are going to be used, just like Killian's talons, to help him hunt prey. And then this here is an eagle skull replica. So you can see that large beak um, that's pretty pointy at the end for hunting prey. And we do have uh, their eye socket right there, which is where those really fabulous eyes are going to be. And then we have two sets of feathers here. Can you guys figure out which one of these might be from a hawk? If you guess these ones, you are right. So these ones are from a red tail hawk. You can see that kind of red color. Um, and then these ones over here are from a blue and gold macaw. So you can see that bright blue and gold color. All right, guys. All right. So this is my friend Killian, and he is a red-tailed hawk. So they get their name because of the reddish coloration on their tail, which you guys will get to see a little bit closer as we go. Um, this is one of the most common hawks found in our area and actually one of the largest as well. Now I mentioned we're gonna focus on his eyesight today. If you take a look at Killian's face, he definitely has some very large eyes and they face forward because he is a predator. Killian belongs to the group of birds known as birds of prey and that includes hawks, eagles, owls, falcons, and then sometimes vultures depending on, on who you talk to. Um, so Killian's eyes are gonna face forward to help him to find his food and track it. Um, he has what's called a ridge above his eyebrow there. Um, that also helps him to, to see in the sunlight when he's hunting in the day because he is a diurnal, a daytime hunter. So instead of being like an owl who hunts at night, hawks are active during the day. So he has that ridge above each eye. It makes him look very serious and very scary sometimes, but that ridge actually helps him to keep his eyes protected and shielded from the sun. So he's gonna use those to track down his food. And um, the eyes on a hawk actually take up a lot of their skull, not quite as much as an owl's, but a pretty decent amount. And they're one of the most specialized and well-adapted sets of eyesight um, on the planet. So most other animals don't have any kind of eyesight compared to a hawk. 
And that's where the, the phrase, watch you like a hawk, comes from. It's thought that they can see about eight times better than humans. They have both rods and cones, so those are two different types of cells that are found in our eyes. Rods help us to see in different lighting and cones help us to see different color. Hawks have both rods and cones to help them see both during the day um, and also kind of near dusk as well, but they can also see a wider spectrum of colors than us. So we actually talked about that with box turtles last week and some of our other animals. Some animals can see ultraviolet light, which is um, the spectrum of colors that humans can't see. So hawks can see all different colors. They can see black and white and they can see different tones. So they can hunt sort of at the evening when um, the light might not be the brightest, so it's a little trickier to see their prey. These guys also um, have a very wide field of vision. So they have what's called binocular vision, and that means that um, when they are looking forward, they can actually see really far in all directions. They have about a 240 degree um, angle of, of vision with um, their eyes combined. So that means they can see <laughs> around to the sides and almost some of the back of their head. Um, so a little bit different than humans. We cannot see nearly as well as that. Um, so they can actually see off to the side and behind them a little bit too. And their eyesight is so specialized, so detailed, because they actually have two different focal points or phobia in their eyes. Um, one of them faces off to the side and that actually helps them to detect movement. So being a hunter, he needs to be able to see a lot of different small animals, um, prey animals like mice and squirrels and chipmunks. So he can actually detect movement using the side focal point of his eye. And then he also has a focal point that faces forward. And this is gonna help him see detail. So it's often said that hawks like Killian here can actually see a small mouse moving around at the end of a football field. Um, so these guys have the ability to actually detect movement much better than us. They have the ability to focus their eyes um, independently as well too. So for us, if you were to walk into um, a dark room after being outside in the bright sunlight, it would actually be very hard for you to adjust your eyes. It takes a minute or two um, to make sure that you can see. Um, and that's because our eyes contract involuntarily. So we don't have control over whether our eyes, our pupils specifically contract to help us see in different lighting. It kind of happens on its own. But for hawks and many other birds of prey, they actually have the ability um, to do that on their own. They can control whether they're contracting or expanding their pupils. And this helps them to adjust in different lighting very quickly. And it also helps them to focus in different ways. Um, one of the really cool things about binocular vision is that it means that both of those eyes have an overlapping area. So that means that each eye kind of helps the other eye out a little bit. And one way you can test this at home, you actually have binocular vision, but one way you can test this at home is to cover one eye with one hand and then try to catch something. So I don't suggest throwing anything large or dangerous or hard because you may miss, um, but if you toss, you know, like a small bean bag or something, it's probably gonna be more difficult for you to catch that bean bag with one eye covered than it would be to have both eyes. And that's because having both eyes um, cover a different or cover a uh, similar area helps us with what's called depth perception. So that's how we kind of judge how far something is from us. So hawks have an amazing sense of depth perception and that helps them to swoop down and catch their prey because they are often hunting really, really high in the sky. Red-tailed hawks have very broad wings that help them to soar and to fly. And so they're often looking from either really high perches or from um, soaring really high above to find small animals. So they need to be able to judge exactly how far away they are, um, especially when they're coming in very quickly for the hunt, for the kill. Um, as they're diving down through that brush and down into that field, they need to know exactly how far away that mouse is before they reach out and try to grab it. So that bino binocular eyesight really helps with that. Um, they also have some special eyelids. So we learned about Zeppelin the owl last week. He has one of these eyelids as well. Um, they have a third eyelid called the nictitating membrane. And this third eyelid um, closes, it's kind of clear in color, and it closes over his eye very quickly. Sometimes it's hard to see. And it keeps it protected. It keeps it nice and wet and clear and um, removes any debris that could have gotten into those eyes. Because their eyesight is so important for finding food, um, they really want to make sure those eyes stay healthy and clean. So it kind of acts like a little windshield wiper, wiping any dirt and dust and anything off of their eye. And it also helps them when they're hunting because if they're diving through brush, you know, they not only need to know how far that mouse is, but they also need to protect that eye and keep it from getting all scratched up by branches and leaves. So they will often close their nictitating membrane, that clear eyelid, when they're hunting to make sure nothing happens to those eyes. 
So um, we want to kind of show off Killian's eyesight a little bit. So we're going to set up a special perch for him. And um, we're going to show you guys what he looks like when he flies. Now, unfortunately, Killian is missing part of a wing. So you guys will see um, when he does try to do his flights that he can't go very far. And that's actually why he ended up here at Elmwood Park Zoo. We'll talk about that a little bit later after he gets a few flights in. So I have um, one of my trainers with me, Rebecca. She's going to help us out. She's actually going to put a little snap on that perch for him. And we're going to see if Killian wants to come and fly towards you guys. Okay, so you'll be able to see that eyesight and that depth perception in action. There we go. So Killian is eating his lunch slash breakfast slash dinner for the day. Um, he gets fed about one time a day and um, we use his food often for training. And so he is getting little bits of um, mice today. That's one of his favorite foods. And he might want to stay on the perch a little bit. He's enjoying that. <laughs> so you can see Killian's beautiful red tail. Step up. All right. Let's see if we get a little bit of a bigger tidbit for him. There we go. There. I think he was having, having trouble seeing it. All right. So you can see Killian's wing is not full on that one side. Unfortunately, he suffered from an injury and had to have part of his wing removed. So um, that's actually why he lives with us at Elmwood Park Zoo, because he would not be able to survive in the wild, even though he still has amazing eyesight um, and he still has his talons to help him grab food and that sharp beak. If you can't fly and you're a bird in the wild, you usually don't end up surviving very long. All right, we can have him come on over and do another one. Um, see if he wants to hop over there again. You guys can see his, his awesome wing slapping. Checking out the camera. He's not used to being on camera, guys, so this is a good training for him. All right. So we're going to have him come back here. We're going to have the camera back up just a little bit. See if we can get him to focus on me again. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> a little hop. So we actually do this kind of stuff with Killian. Um, to help keep him healthy, even though he can't fly, um, it is good for him to have exercise and uh, it keeps his mind and his body stimulated. It also helps us to show him off. So it, as one of our ambassador animals, um, we want Killian to, to show guests and visitors um, how he would survive in the wild. And one of those ways is by hunting for food, flying and hunting for food. So instead of us just talking about his wingspan, we like to show it off. So we can do another one here. See if he wants to, to hop on over. All right. Okay. I think he's <laughs> very excited to be on camera today. He's like, what on earth is that? So we'll see if he sees that little tidbit on his toes there. Remember, he's got amazing eyesight. So things that may not seem very interesting or exciting to us, um, often are a lot more intense for hawks and owls and other birds that have amazing eyesight. So it's important for us to take that into consideration when we are working with these animals. We sometimes may not even be able to see or understand um, what they're perceiving in their world because their senses are so much stronger. So I think what we'll do now is we'll take some questions. Um, we'll get Killian back on the glove here, see if he wants to hop over. <laughs> All right, you can do it, buddy. You might need a little encouragement. Maybe you guys can cheer at home, see if that helps him, helps him get excited about popping on there. There we go, good job. Thanks for helping out, guys. <laughs> All right, so we've probably got a lot of cool questions. So Cassidy and Maggie want to know, does he have any friends? So red-tailed hawks are um, typically pretty solitary. And most of the animals I feel like we've been meeting this last week um, have lived by themselves and enjoyed living by themselves. So um, red-tailed hawks are similar. Now they do mate for life. Uh, and so in the wild, this time of year, they're actually starting to build nests and find a mate. And um, they do pair up and they'll stay together their whole lives as long as they're both alive. As far as at the zoo, Killian does live on his own. Um, he does not live with a mate or a friend. Um, all right, Zion wants to know how big 
um, do red tail hawks get? So Killian is full size for a red tail. They typically have a wingspan, so if he stretches his wings all the way out and he wasn't missing a piece of his wing, um, his wingspan would be between three and five feet. So they're pretty big birds. Now Killian is a male red tailed hawk, so he's a little bit smaller than the females would be. Females can be bigger than that. He weighs about two and a half pounds. So even though he's a pretty big hawk, he's one of the largest hawks found in our area, um, he actually does not weigh a whole lot. So these guys are pretty, um, pretty light because they have special bones that are made to be nice and hollow to help them to fly. They're also made of covered in feathers, which don't weigh much at all either. Amy asked, is he heavy? So two and a half pounds doesn't seem like a whole lot to hold, but if you're holding Killian for a long time, he can get a little bit heavy. All right, Brendan wants to know, what does he prey on in the wild? Excellent question. So red-tailed hawks love to eat small rodents. So things like um, mice and squirrels and chipmunks, and they're commonly found living in our areas with us because humans, we kind of, you know, can be messy sometimes and we attract a lot of these little animals to our backyards and thus the hunters of those animals come as well. So red-tailed hawks live near people. They're very adaptable. They love to hunt above farm fields and different um, schoolyards and even your own backyard and along the roadside. So hawks eat a variety of foods. Mostly it's gonna be those small rodents, but they'll also sometimes hunt for snakes, um, smaller birds, uh, maybe even some bugs occasionally too if things get rough. David wants to know when is his birthday? So we unfortunately do not know when Killian's birthday is. He came to us though in 2010. So he's been with us for a few years. And um, we don't know Killian's age because he was a rehab bird. So that means that unfortunately um, he is non-releasable. So he came to, it's called a wildlife rehabilitation center. Uh, sort of like Zeppelin, our screech owl we met last week when someone found him and he did have to have part of his wing removed because it was injured. So it's hard to tell how old they are when they're an adult and he came to us at about adult age. Isla wants to know how fast can he fly? So red-tailed hawks um, are really good at soaring. They're usually going to kind of spread their wings and um, ride the wind. They're going to be a little bit lazy about flying, but if they're diving they can reach um, speeds of up to uh, 200 miles per hour. So they can, they can speed down and dive down for food really quickly. Sarah wants to know how high do they fly? That's a great question too. So I don't know the exact height that the red-tailed hawk could achieve, um, but they are definitely found and seen often, um, sometimes hundreds of feet up into the air. So um, they are uh, excellent at soaring. Like I said, they'll ride the wind and uh, they will um, catch those breezes and make sure that they can uh, not flap their wings as much as they might have to. So Emily wants to know, harp show for his talents. What a great question. So you guys saw, he just went to reach for his little snack. And that's why I wear a glove on this hand too, because red-tailed hawks do use their feet most of the time to try to grab their food. So Killian would use those talons to swoop down and grab things like his mice or his chipmunks. Those are gonna be his tools for catching his food, whereas he has that sharp beak that's gonna be used for ripping and tearing. And so those talons are pretty sharp. Um, we don't really do much to, to trim them or anything. He kind of has his own way of keeping good care of them. So <laughs> he um, will perch on different branches and kind of wear them down. And um, he has some different rocks in his enclosure that he'll also sit on to help wear them down as well. So they're pretty sharp. We do have to be careful. That's why we're a big glove on there and a glove on this hand too, just to be safe. Because Killian, even though he does live here at the zoo and we work really hard to build a relationship with him, um, he is still a wild animal, so we have to take precautions. Zachary likes Killian's name. How did we come up with it? Um, so uh, Killian was, uh, came to us in the zoo in March. So we came up with an Irish name and Killian is an Irish name. Excellent questions today, guys. Um, Colt wants to know where did Killian come from? He actually came from Maryland. So U.S. Fish and Wildlife in Maryland um, are the ones who delivered Killian to us. So after he was, um, after he was found in the wild and then taken to a rehab. So many people are asking, um, how was he injured? So unfortunately, we believe that Killian suffered from a gunshot wound. Um, and this was, this was thought because there were some bits of pellet or shell left in his wing. And unfortunately, this does happen to birds of prey because sometimes they are mistaken as other animals. Um, sometimes um, they are 
unfairly shot at because people think they might be hunting for their, their livestock, like small chickens or small pets. Now again, Killian only weighs about two and a half pounds. So even though he is one of the largest hawk species found in this area, he's probably not gonna fly off with your small dog or cat or your small brother or sister. Um, as long as you are, you know, making sure your animals, your own pets are safe in their backyard, hawks are probably not a threat. Unfortunately, they do um, opportunistic hunt, so that means if there are chickens just walking around, a young hawk especially, who may not be very good at um, catching food, it could take advantage of that. So we believe that Killian was either accidentally shot because, um, you know, someone maybe misidentified him, or he was shot on purpose because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, so these birds are protected. It is illegal to hunt them or even collect parts from them um, because they are protected under the Migratory Bird Act. All right, Sean and Andrew want to know, and Zelia want to know what his wingspan is. So his wingspan is um, close, his is a little short, but they can have upwards of a four to five foot wingspan. Um, his wingspan is probably closer to three feet. All right, Dave likes weird pets. Are they illegal to own as pets? Excellent question, Dave. So red-tailed hawks are not really legal to own as pets. Um, however, if you grow up and you're interested in working with birds of prey, um, you can become what's known as a falconer. So falconers actually train birds of prey to hunt um, in a partnership. And red-tailed hawks are one of the species of hawk you can own as a falconer. But that takes a lot of practice and a lot of dedication. And um, you have to spend a few years learning all the right ways to do things before you get that um, permission. So great question. Philomena wants to know what sound does he make? Excellent question. So um, red-tailed hawks actually make a sound that you all have probably heard before, although you've probably heard it in a movie associated with a bald eagle soaring through the sky. So if you've ever um, been watching a movie or TV and you've seen your bald eagle soaring and you hear that ah, screaming sound, um, that is the sound that a red-tailed hawk makes. So they actually use that um, in theaters and movies and, and on television to make the sound of the bald eagle, because bald eagles don't sound like that. Bald eagles actually sound like big old seagulls. They're not nearly as impressive as red-tailed hawks when it comes to vocalizations. So that loud screaming sound is actually what a red-tailed hawk sounds like. And they will make that whenever they're protecting their territory um, or you know, kind of calling back and forth to each other during the eating season. All right, people are asking if he bites or scratches at people. So um, not on purpose. Thankfully, Killian um, does not have any intent to hurt any of us. And again, we work really hard to try to make sure he's comfortable. Um, so we do wear protective gear just in case, but Killian never tries to bite or scratch on purpose. So most of the time, if it happens, um, like a little bit earlier, it's because we're not fast enough and we're giving him some snacks and he's just trying to get that snack. Um, so we use his food again to, to help him be comfortable in different situations and for training. So we do have to be cautious around his, his tools that he would use to catch and eat that food. All right, so Gia wants to know where does he live? So he lives here at the, the zoo um, behind the scenes. So we actually do have a red-tailed hawk on exhibit um, named Hunter. She's missing an eye. Uh, Killian lives behind the scenes, so he's not out on exhibit. He comes out for programming. But in the wild, they're found throughout the United States. Um, North and North America and into um, Mexico as well. So they are one of the most common hawks found across this part of the world. There are many different colorations that come within this species. Sometimes they're a little more dark, sometimes they're a little more light, but most of them are always going to have that, that reddish colored tail. All right, Miles wants to know why do they move their heads so much? Actually, qu excellent question, Miles. So um, Killian is always taking in his surroundings. So remember, we talked about his amazing eyesight today. He can focus both on detail and movement with different parts of his eyes. His eyes are very large compared to ours, and they can scan a very large range of area. So Killian is always, always examining what's around him. Um, right now, he's probably looking around trying to figure out what's going on because this is a little different than a normal program we might do. Um, he's also looking for some snacks as we go. Um, and he's also just making sure everything is, is calm and cool. So he has to watch out for predators in the wild. So that's an instinct that they don't ever really um, necessarily leave behind. Nicole wants to know, does he like to play? Um, not necessarily the way that some of our other animals would. So Killian does like to um, explore different areas. So we take Killian for walks around the zoo. We let him sit on different perches. We give him different types of food. So we give him enrichment in different ways, but Killian doesn't necessarily like to play with toys. All right, um, so the last question for today is, 
Brianna and Joey um, want to know how often does he get trained? All right, so um, Killian actually gets trained every single day. So we work with him, um, again, using his normal food and he gets trained every single day as best as we can. You know, sometimes that training session might just be hopping to the glove or maybe it's just going in his crate, different parts of his care and his routine. And some days it might be doing Zoo School Live. So um, this is a very different training session for Killian. He's never done a live broadcast and I think he's done a really fantastic job today. And so you guys at home are actually helping us to train him as well. All right, guys, so in just a moment, we're going to sign off with Mr. Killian. I want to remind you guys to check out our website and, um, and to uh, make sure you look at the Zoo School Live and uh, other episodes if you've missed those. We have activity sheets to go along with them. We have different activities that you can do at home as well um, related to other subjects. Those will be coming up soon. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe um, so that you can get notifications when we have new videos coming up. And for those of you um, who are interested in helping us out, you can actually save up to 55% on memberships and renewals of memberships. You actually can choose what you want your discount to be. So if you actually um, contribute more, that'll be helping the zoo or you know if you need to you can use that full 55% discount so please check that out at elmwoodparkzoo.org and um, we look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow all right and Killian says have a great rest of your day